what is going on my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world it looks like we might oh never mind i didn't even see this one man the enkidu mirror matches lately why are people playing this character i don't get it like enkidong is apparently given up on biakia which i'm certainly not going to complain about al rakir is i mean as you can see from his icon he is a known chaos player Actually, come to think of it, wasn't there, isn't there a Canadian player named Rakir? That, like, I heard that he won. A, uh, I, I don't know what tournament it was, but he won a pretty. I mean, not. It wasn't a big tournament in terms of Unist. Like, there was no international competition or anything. I'm pretty sure it was just all Canada. But he did. He won a tournament with Enkidu, which I mean, that's impressive in and of itself. Is this the same dude? Nice little cross-up right there. I dig it. Putting him in the corner. Oh, actually, like, perfectly timed to grab the, uh, to just kill the counter attempt. And that will be enough damage to kill. That's actually really cool. I didn't know the, uh, his infinite worth EXS color, like, all the stuff going around, changed based on the color palette that you picked. I did not know that, but that's, that's a pretty cool effect. I think that's actually the first time I've seen that difference. Oh, just gets caught by the charge 6C. That is unfortunate. Veils off the second charge attempt though. Good backdash does not actually confirm the 2B, but gets a 5C overhead regardless. That is going to hurt. He's gonna be able to follow this up. And Kidu's so goddamn weird, man. Wow, very nice hit confirm right there, actually, off the whiff button. Yeah, that'll kill. Good shit. Enkidong is just really strong. He makes Enkidu look like a real character. Um, shit, what was I gonna talk about? It, it's just, it's so strange that landing, um, his infinite worth without the animation, just the projectile, because if you're right next to him, it will actually go into an animation and you can't do anything off of it. But, if you're too far away, then it just qualifies as a projectile, and as you saw, it causes a wall bounce, and you can actually get a full combo off of it. It's, it's so weird. And Kidu's just full of... Ooh, don't, no whiff punish. Interesting. That hide player was very scared that entire time. Does get the whiff punish right there, though, so... Getting it started. Nice! Anti-air. Damn, that's gonna hurt. Actually, not quite as much as I thought it would, but still. Whoa! Gets the overhead, gets the grid break. Is he gonna have enough damage to kill him? Is it hide players? I gotta ask. Is this man? Are these man's combos real? It doesn't feel like the combos that I'm seeing are real. But I mean, not being a hide player, I can't actually say one way or the other if that is a correct feeling or not. Oh no! Getting it started early. Oh, he just gets caught by the overhead. That's a really dirty overhead, though. Like, that's not easily blockable. And he just gets to do the same thing again. And he has great advantage. This is some bullshit. Just gets caught with the low. Doesn't hit confirm it. But this is, I mean, that, that's almost, it's as hopeless as it can get. He just, the disrespect. Learn how to block me. I'm gonna just go for this overhead over and over until you block it. Does the same round start that worked the first or the second round. And he gets caught for it. Good jump out. Really good jump out. Are we going corner to corner? This really it doesn't it don't feel like real combos. Biaki is going corner to corner. Oh my god, this is bullshit. It's still going. Good chain shift. Oh. That sucks. Gets the crossover too. Gets the uh, accidental reset. Probably gonna get a kill here. 20 bucks overhead? 
He went for it. He got super for his troubles. Good pressure. Good blocks. Can't do anything off of that. And just gets thrown. Hyde takes it. Good shit. That second round made it uh, look a little questionable. But he brought it back. Uh... <laughs> Every time I see Seth, man. Every time I see Seth, I... Uh... I don't look forward to this. It's uh, every single time I am just <sighs> reminded of the silliness. That wasn't silly though. That was just really bad neutral and defense by the Mika. Letting him just run up for free like that. You gotta check. That's one of the main things that you gotta learn in neutral is how to check people. Just make sure they, they don't get to do that. Like if you ever let somebody run up full screen on you, you fucked up hard. It doesn't matter what character you're using, what character they're using. If they were able to run up on you from full screen, you fucked something up. And Mika got fucked up for it, so. So it happens when you give a character like Seth momentum. It is over in a flash. Gets caught, good hit confirmed. To start, Mika can do the same thing. Not quite as well, but she still has some very dirty pressure and mix up, especially once she gets chain shift. That wasn't dirty at all, that was just stupid. Gets hit by the raw, stand there for five seconds, and then do a super command grab. Second veil off of the round. This time he gets caught. Is this gonna kill? Of course it is. 45-66 raw. Always feels good. Getting hit by Mika's super command grab is basically a license straight to a grave. It's actually worse if she has chain shift. Nice blocking. <laughs> The slowest assault I've ever seen in my life, and not only does he get hit, he gets grid broken. What the fuck kind of Oki was that? See, this match, I'm actually not at all like sitting here like, man, Seth is a bullshit character. Like, no, he's not. He's not looking too good. He hasn't done anything dirty. He hasn't really done anything at all. It's just both of them kind of let the other player do whatever the fuck they wanted once they got even of the slightest bit of momentum. This wasn't a good look for either player, to be honest. Ooh, this person ranked up. I wonder if this is the match they ranked up with. Because in this match, they were both red, but this Phonon's profile now says purple. That was kind of fucked up. That Batista should have blocked that, but it's still kind of fucked up. Very disrespectful. But it's a good test to make, right? Like, do you have any defense whatsoever? If yes, the player will block this. If no, now I know I can do whatever the fuck I want. This Phonon's offense, though. What am I watching? Like, these are two of the most monstrous neutral characters in this cast. Both completely and utterly failing to play any sort of effective neutral. And it's very strange to see. And I also think that was nice reversal. Nice punish. What the fuck am I watching between the last match with the Mika and the uh, the uh, Seth and now this match? Like, I'm here to watch good players, not this bullshit. You're gonna get chipped. Like, she has five seconds and this is Batista. You're gonna get chipped. Never mind, the Batista's terrible. Holy shit! 
You have like 15 different projectiles that you can lay on top of this woman's head, cause the little Stein things that you set down to explode, do massive chip damage, and instead you decide to do her charged overhead from a mile up in the goddamn sky. What the hell? I'm gonna just let this rock. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink the rest I have. This is a 1.75 liter uh, jug of water. I probably have about 1.1 liters left of it. I'm about to drink this entire goddamn thing right now and hope the match finishes before I'm done so I don't have to talk about this shit anymore. I can't actually drink that much at once, I'll explode. But it's tempting! God help me. Like they both just jumped toward each other. Both of these characters have incredibly effective grounded tools to work on each other. And both of them are just jumping at each other. If you ever want to, f I mean, this is very, this is far, oh my god, I have to suffer another round of this. This is far more true of games that don't have, like, air dashes or any sort of aerial movement to them whatsoever. So, like, Street Fighter, King of Fighters, well, King of Fighters isn't a really good example. The short hopping around is actually really fucking good in that game. But, in Street Fighter especially, you can tell kind of how good or bad somebody is. Like, one of the easiest ways to tell how good or bad somebody is at neutral is how much they jump. Like, watch the high-level Street Fighter players. They damn near never jump. Watch the low-level Street Fighter players. The floor is lava to them. It's a very significant difference. And, like, what I'm watching right now is the same fucking thing. These players just keep... She just dashed up, full screen, and veiled off in this Batista's face. And then the Batista didn't punish it. What? Oh my god! How would you ever th have thought that would work? Please kill. Like, I'm kind of thinking this might not actually be enough damage to kill. This will be, like, right below the threshold of necessary damage. But please, thank the lord this match is over. Jesus. Like, I mean, I mention this every once in a while. But that phone on has a... How do you have a 74% win rate across a thousand matches playing like that? Fuck me. Like, I hate to shit talk... I don't hate to shit talk at all. I love shit talking. It's my favorite thing in the world. But there is a point at which it starts to feel like I'm getting a little personal. Maybe this person just had a bad match. That's always a possibility, right? You know, you shouldn't judge somebody just off of the one single match that you see. Like, for instance, I shouldn't judge this Nanase for doing this over and over, nor should I judge this Carmine for actually getting fucking hit by it. But sometimes people just look so damn bad you can't help yourself. Why is this working? Carmine, please! I regret making the decision to do a replay theater of this game today. Like, if I had just waited a week, instead I would never have seen any of these matches and my life probably would have been a lot better. Is it just kind of like, if I start out with a dope match, right? Like that Enkidu Mir match was actually really good, really effective play. And uh, I mean, good all around play. And then every match since then has just been a lesson in shit. Here's what you look like when you're mediocre at the game. Every single match. And these are all high ranking people. These are all people with a decent chunk of points with decent win rates and they have you know the highest level of uh color ranking thingy whatever the fuck it's called that's possible in the game and yet this is how they play this is how this nanase plays and yet she's getting wins 
and she's high ranked. Like what? It's just st such a stark contrast between like what the quote unquote good players play like online versus what you would see if you go to a tournament that features actual real competition. This Nanase would go 0-2 in literally any tournament I have been to for this game. And I don't even go to like, like NorCal, actually NorCal is probably the best scene for uh, Under Night and Birth. Like 2 gigabyte combo for a while was basically the Sonic Fox of this game. Like he just, he did not lose tournaments. He never lost tournaments for like a year. He just dominated every single uh, tournament of this game he went to. And I would actually say out of like all the anime game scenes that we have, Under Night and Birth is the strongest in NorCal. Like we have some decent Guilty Gear players. Damon Doe is a really good Slayer player. Uh, GC Yoshi made a decent name for himself with his Bedman. I'm not actually sure if Bjorn is now a NorCal resident. I know he shows up to the tournaments a decent amount of the time, but I feel like I remember hearing that he moved to SoCal. Like, I think he used to live in the Midwest. And then he moved somewhere out here. But I'm, I don't actually know 100%. I just know I've seen him a decent chunk of times at NorCal Dogfight. So I don't know if he's a NorCal resident now or not. But obviously Bjorn is a very good player. I think one year at EVO, he was the only... Like, every single year at EVO, we have one American player. Actually, I think except for the most recent one. For Guilty Gear. But one of the years, I believe, he was that American representative in Top 8. He's a very good player. Well, Ryan X Elite has been getting better and better. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, every single NorCal dogfight is Damon Doe first, Orion X Elite second, sometimes Bjorn is there, and he will pretty much always get top three as well. I don't know why I'm going into this, probably because it's a hide mirror match, and I can't even pretend to be interested. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like, I, when I went to NorCal for Unis when I was trying to start to get into the game and then my car died and I stopped being able to go to NorCal Dogfight which sucks. Doesn't suck anymore because <laughs> now they only play Guilty Gear and plays Blue Cross Back Battle and Dragon Ball Fighters. <laughs> God damn it. But um, shit what was I talking about? When I went there I was very impressed by the overall quality of the players like they were um, holy shit the grid <laughs> On his name's Tuna. Tuna can. I don't even want to know what the hell. I don't know what the hell the rest of that says. But Tuna can had a whole hell of a lot of grid right there and got nothing for it. Holy shit, that is plus. He has all the grid in the world again. Good throw tech. Good defense. He just blocked it out. I was about to say, like, he better spend that fucking meter here just to get the damage, because otherwise it's basically a coin flip about whether or not he's going to be able to get a hit or not. And then he's just going to get timed out, and that's exactly what happened. He got timed out. Oh, I'll take this. These are two very high, even though we've seen both characters, these are two very high point people. And, uh... The previous Mika and Carmine matches left a lot to be desired, so if I can pretend those didn't happen, I will be happy. But yeah, there's some very, very good Under Night and Birth players in NorCal. That was basically my entire point. And pretty much every single one of them is better than like those four matches that happened after the first opening Mir match. I think now who's the Terry? Tari? He basically took over NorCal once two gigabyte combos stopped coming regularly. Apparently he's trying to From what I heard, I don't know if this is gone anywhere. He was trying to uh become a Splatoon pro with a few different people. Does that actually have a real esports scene? 
mean, I'm sure it has a tournament scene, but is there any sort of popularity behind it? I've never played Splatoon. I have no interest in the game myself whatsoever, so I don't know anything about it. But when I heard about that, I was kind of like, huh. Wonder how big that scene actually is. I should have asked more about it, but I didn't. He still shows up from time to time, and I think it's kind of a, uh, a mark of how overall bad uh, the NorCal anime scene has gotten. Not to trash talk it too much. Like, again, the Unis scene is basically the only one that I would consider strong out of all the games that we play. But I think it's, it's kind of a mark of how overall lackluster the competition is in NorCal for most of the anime games, that, like, for Blaze Blue. Whenever Beneath or 2 Gigabyte combo come out, they just win. They just kill everybody easily, except, and then it just basically comes down to themselves, even though neither one of them really plays the games anymore. It's kind of sad. It's also kind of a mark of where the competition is at, given that I was able to go out with how rusty and bad my ass is at the game and get second. Good block, good safe jump. I should have been paying more attention to this match. I'm in my own world right now. I went off on a tangent and I didn't stop. It's actually really interesting. This Mika's doing unsafe pressure and just using the threat of her having grid to prevent the Carmine from actually trying to poke out of it. Because it really it's a catch-22, right? Like, if he doesn't try to check her, then she just gets free offense going forever and this happens. But if he does try to check it, she pops grid shift, or chain shift, and then just blows him up with some sort of invincible reversal into a massive fucking combo. It's a bad look. And it's kind of how you can tell if somebody's good or not is if they preserve resources like that. Like a lot of players really wouldn't. It's kind of the same thing with a. Uh, with Tager players. Most of them, if you watch, they get Spark Bolt and they will immediately throw it. Like, they'll just get rid of it instantly. Good Tager players will pretty much use it to make people scared to press buttons. Like, if you're full screen against the I mean, well, uh, accepting specific characters. I used to think I could react to just about anything uh, and blow people up for doing it, and then I learned to uh, my folly that Sparkle has kind of not been doing too well in the how much it beats department. Like, I still remember one of the like most shocking moments to me when I did start going back to those offline casuals was playing against a Rachel player, and they were just recklessly zoning, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, you do I have Sparkle, are you stupid? And so, um, they, they were trying to zone me, so I was like, all right, cool. Thanks for giving me free spark bolt, so I chuck it out. And then she puts down George. She reacted to me putting down, uh, throwing out the spark bolt by just putting down George. And apparently, the uh, initial frames of George coming out, he will take any projectile and just nullify it. They won't trade, it won't get rid of George. He just nullifies anything coming at Rachel and then pops down on the ground and starts, wa starts walking his ass toward me. I cannot begin to describe to you how angry that moment made me. It legitimately pissed me off. Like, this matchup isn't already enough in Rachel's favor? You gotta present that to her? Fuck me, man, this is bullshit. She didn't even get magnetized. It was the worst. Anyway, Akatsuki just got his ass kicked. Peace out, dude. Okay, that was not a happy moment in my life. Anytime I see that, like, news, someone news, uh, D's, is it 4D, maybe? We'll just straight up beat Sparkle. Like, whenever I see shit like that, it just bugs the hell out of me, because it's like... Sparkle's supposed to be my one answer to these characters. It is supposed to be the equalizer. That if I'm patient, if I just block it out, if I just chill, eventually I'll get Spark Bolt. And then they actually have to be careful about their zoning. They can't just throw out whatever the fuck they want whenever the fuck they want. 
apparently that has changed over time and now it's just like yeah every single zoning character in the game can just completely nullify sparkle and there's really nothing you can do about it so have fun with those matchups we'll just make them worse because they already weren't bad enough makes me so sad Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to rant about Tager while we're watching this. Good hit confirm. Double normals on the way down. Make sure she gets that combo. Good shit. Bogner just got her ass kicked, which makes me kind of sad. It still kind of surprises me whenever I see it, like... Just the difference between Wagner and Enkidu. Like, Wagner has such a, like, she's so well designed visually. Her movesets, movesets, her moveset works so well with all, like, everything she has. All of her tools have a good purpose. There's really no move that's just like, why would you ever use this? It's completely pointless. She has a really strong moveset, really good visual design, just everything about her is so good and then you get to Enkidu and it's like half of his moveset is completely useless don't even try to use it outside of a combo most of his shit doesn't even work well together the only thing he has going for him is that he looks cool once he does get in motion but good goddamn luck actually getting him in motion because he's so clunky and so awkward to play and half the time you'll do something and it should work but for some magical reason it just won't it's like, how does that happen? How do you make a character like Wagner, who's just, again, so well designed, and at the same time make Enkidu? It just blows my mind, man. The veil off. Gets both power ups. Oh, she gets a full combo off this, too. Because she has the power up. Gets the sword power up again. Good throw tech. She's gonna get a kill with this. Damn. Wagner not respecting the throw tech. You have to respect when somebody techs your throw. It will never end well for you. Because they have seven frames of advantage coming out of it. Is there any? Let me just check and see. 621 was. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Nothing else worth. Alright. Thank you for what? Oh, actually, come to think of it. Who the hell was the last time in Ori? I have not seen... 624, where the fuck was that? Oh, you know what? I actually recognize that name. It's probably been overwritten. Like, let me just check it out real quick. Let me see what it is. Oh, no, it is the same one. Huh. Alright, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it wasn't there because the person who uploaded it has the orange square. Damn it!